So I came to the ocean from sort of a roundabout way. Uh, I started looking up at the stars. I've always been a, a star child, interested in going out into space. And a uh, funny thing happened to me on the way to outer space. Um, I met uh, Hollywood film director James Cameron, and he was looking for astrobiologists to take with him to the bottom of the ocean, and uh, I got to go. So that's how I got involved in the oceans. So, so it's sort of like getting thrown in the deep end, you know, right off the bat. Um, but what, what I'm here to talk to you about tonight is deep sea exploration and some of the exciting things that are happening right now. And it's really a big year. 2012 is a big year for deep ocean exploration. And when I'm saying deep, I mean really deep. Like, it takes, it, you got to sort of get a sense of the scale of all these things. So the, the, most of the ocean is about, you know, 3,000, 3, 5,000, 6,000 meters deep, you know, like sort of the general seafloor. That's where we went. That's where, like, my deepest dive was 3,519 meters, uh, which is about Titanic depth, so the bottom of the ocean. We were looking at those hydrothermal vents, you know, the 700 degree, you know, volcano, underwater volcanoes, things like that. You know, we just cruise by them, you know, it's fine. Um, but the, the deep, and so most of the submersibles in the world, the deep, I mean, now submarines don't go very deep at all, like military ones, they're pretty shallow, but the research vessels can, like the Russian mirrors that we were on, not, sorry, that's not a mirror there, by the way, uh, the Russian mirrors we were on can go to 6,000 meters, so they can go to most places in the ocean, and uh, the, the Americans, we have the Alvin, which can go about 4,000 meters, um, and so, you know, so that's what we can normally see, but in addition to this, there's also these deep trenches, and um, I mean, they're not like this, like in, our, in my imagination in, or in the pictures in the magazines and the websites, it's always shows like these deep crevasses, you know, like you're gonna just sink to the bottom of this crevasse like the abyss. But it, you know, if you talk to, you know, experts like Don Walsh who've been there, they say, no, it's more like, you know, a gentle sloping basin. It's not quite that dramatic, but to fit it on the web screen, you gotta kinda, you know, condense it down. But anyway, so now there's this idea that like we want to be able to explore all of the oceans. Like what is in these what is in these deepest parts? And these deep parts go twice as deep. So now instead of just going to 6,000 meters, now you're going to uh, like 10, almost 11,000 meters. And I'm, I'm speaking in meters, so let's see. But to give you a sense of that, in feet, it's taller than Everest is tall. So Everest is about 28 or something thousand feet. Um, and the deepest trench is like 35,000 feet. So it's like Everest with like thousands of feet to spare. Um, so it's, it's deep. <laughs> um, and for some, so we're out at sea with James Cameron doing these dives to these, you know, volcanoes. And he's like, we'd be at dinner at night and he would be around the table. He's like, you guys, I've got this idea. I want to build a submersible, like a one person sub, like just a little sphere just around me. And um, it'll, it'll have these like wings on the pod so it'll spin as it goes down and I could take my cameras and I go to the very bottom of the Mariana Trench, which is like 16,000 pounds per square inch. Just like imagine like 16,000 pounds of barbells on your head. So it's a lot of barbells. Um, we're like, okay, Jim, that sounds like a great idea. And you know, it's like beyond what any, I mean, they did it, okay, so one person, one Expedition has gone to the bottom of Mariana Trench once in 1960. Um, Don Walsh and, and, and Picard, a Swiss guy and a U.S. Navy guy. Um, and it's, they sort of went like in like a hot air balloon style, you know, just go down and come back up. And that's what James Cameron is trying to do right now. In fact, he's literally trying to do it right now. This is the little sphere that he sits in, in a little, little portal window. And actually the portal window is mostly used for his high definition cameras because of course he's a Hollywood film director. Um, and then all the rest of the ship is all foam. It's all designed for buoyancy. You have to put that much foam, and it's not just like, you know, like your foam cooler that you take to the beach. This is like, you know, specially developed high-tech titanium foam. No, I don't know, just special foam. Um, it's a, to be able to handle that kind of pressure. And it's, uh, so it's still, so there's still the sphere in the middle, but, and it still has the fins so that it'll spin so that it keeps going straight down. That was his crazy idea. Um, so this was, we've, we've known, the whole community's known he's been working on this for years, but he kept the whole design under wraps. He was doing this down in Australia. It was all top secret until like March 7th or so. Finally, all this started splashing out on the web and he did his first test dive. Um, they were taking conveniently located the, uh, between Australia where it was being built and Guam, which is 
the closest port to the Mariana Trench, the deepest point in the world's oceans, um, there is the New Britain Trench, which instead of being seven miles deep is only a mere five miles deep, um, but still, you know, deeper than anyone else is really going. And so he did a test dive just to five miles and, you know, now holds the deepest solo dive record. Uh, at Virgin Oceanic, which is where I work, I've been um, science coordinator and project coordinator for them for the last year. Um, we have also have a sub that, we, they call them full ocean depth subs, um, that we're working on with, uh, that was originally being built for Steve Fawcett, you know, the guy who's like to do crazy things and fly around the world and sail around the world and all that. And um, it's, instead of being titanium or steel or anything, it's, it's, ours is actually made of carbon-carbon fiber. And, uh, and instead of being a sphere, it's actually a cylinder. You know, being a space person, you know, I, I think of this a little bit differently. The media likes to portray this as a, uh, a race between us and Cameron. Um, but I've always been all about, like, you know, co co cooperation, international cooperation, and why can't we all just get along? And, um, and so I think of it more as, like, uh, the Russian space program and the American space program and how they have different strengths that actually turned out to be very complementary. Like, the Russians built space stations and we built reusable space shuttles. And, hey, you got chocolate in my peanut butter. It worked out great. <laughs> um, you know, they, the space stations needed to have water constantly brought up to them. The space shuttle has, is powered by fuel cells that produce water as a byproduct of the fuel production process. So it's like, hey, this is perfect. Match made in space. Um, so I think of our program and Cameron's program as also being very complementary to each other. The systems are very different and they have very different uh, strengths and very different capabilities. Um, our focus has been on being really lightweight. Um, our sub weighs only four tons. Cameron's sub weighs like 12 tons. So it means you need, you know, we can get away with a smaller, our smaller catamaran mothership while, you know, Cameron or Scripps or, you know, other Woods Hole or any of the other oceanographic institutes with the larger, heavier subs have to use bigger motherships and have larger operational costs. So just trying different things. It's like biology, you know, just try different designs, see what works. Um, and we also have lots of cross range. It's, it's more designed, instead of going up and down like a hot air balloon, we go down like an F-16 um, or a Cessna, however you want to look at it. Um, and so once we get to the bottom of the ocean, we have about 10 miles of cross range. So we can scoot around and um, be able to look at lots of different sites of interest. And, and the scientists are excited about that because if you find something cool, like, oh, whoa, look at that, what's that? You know, then they can put in the NSF grant to say, hey, we want to go back to this coordinates. We have, you know, footage of, we saw some, you know, serpentine, you know, mud volcanoes. You know, we'd love to go back and, and check them out. And the NSF's like, oh, well, if you have proof that there's a volcano there, then okay, we'll let you go check it out. Um, meanwhile, Cameron, not surprisingly, optimized his sub for video capture. Um, he's got an eight-foot panel of LEDs going up and down the side. Um, and I have to say, when we were diving with him to the bottom of the ocean, you know, people pay like $25,000 to go to the Sea Titanic, you know, recreationally. Um, but the, the, the native lights on the Russian submersible that you buy, pay to go down in, you know, are like little flashlights, you know, little Duracells or whatever. You're like, oh, look, it's Titanic. But when Cameron goes to Titanic, you know, he brings like an entire Hollywood lighting rig, like a $2 million lighting rig, and he mounts it on the top of the sub, and you're like, Whoo! you're like, dear cuttlefish, who's never seen this much light in your life, you know? <laughs> like, ah! So he's got an eight-foot panel of LEDs uh, and tons of HD and 3D cameras everywhere, um, and a little bot that he can control robotically with another camera and go running around. And also, he's really into science, so he also made sure to prioritize being able to grab samples. So he has, you know, a lot of the, that's what he's used to in the Russian, you know, we would always grab samples with the arm. And so he's like, well, I got to have an arm. So, uh, you know, our airplane doesn't have an arm, but his, you know, camera does have an arm. So we have, you know, different capabilities. Just to give you some perspective on what the hell, you know, when I first started talking about going to the Mariana Trench, I'm like, where, where is the Mariana Trench? Uh, so the answer is it's south of Japan, east of uh, the Philippines. Um, and this is the island of Guam, which is a U.S. territory. They just gave nine delegates to Romney. They're definitely U.S. turf. Uh, so it's a good place, you know, you can just fly there and, you know, have your port and go out to the Mariana Trench because it's about 62 miles off the coast of Guam.
uh, which is, the, and this is the deepest, deepest point right here, the Challenger Deep, it's called. The trench goes all the way up that like green LED chain there and just one, anyway. All right, all right, so that's context for you. The other thing people often talk about is like, why are we doing this? You know, is this just another, you know, Playboy stunt? Is this the new yacht? You know, our submarines the new yacht of the super rich. Um, <laughs> You know, these are million dollar projects, you know, but granted they're being privately funded, you know, these philanthropists are doing this in their own pockets, so that's cool. Um, but I really like this quote from Stephen Hawking. It really talks about like how, you know, that having a human there really brings all of us there and really makes it, takes it another level. Um, and, and I think that's really Cameron's motivation for his dives. You know, he really wants to get people, especially young people, excited about exploration, excited about science. And that's what his motivation is. Um, and I know for Branson, he's also really passionate about protecting the oceans. Um, that's why he's part of the oceanic, uh, sorry, the, sorry, oceanic, I always add the ick, the ocean elders, um, you know, helping to protect the world's oceans. Um, and, you know, he's hoping that when we do our dives, you know, we help get some attention drawn to some of the challenges facing the oceans and, and what we can do about it. So I think that's really cool as well. Uh, I just wanted to just leave you with some uh, gee whiz photos of my expedition. Oh, so, and of course, Cameron made a, video, a movie of our expedition. It's a 3D IMAX movie called Aliens of the Deep, um, which thousands of fifth graders across the country have seen. <laughs> it was my goal. I wanted to inspire kids about s science. So, Yay! yeah. <laughs> but we got, so we were on the rush, we were with the Russians two months at sea, going out into the middle of the ocean where you, Three days out where you can't see land is awesome. Um, and there's some photos of the expedition. That's the Russian submersible, the Mirs. Um, me with Cameron's brother. Um, and then just this last parting shot of uh, me and our acrylic sub um, down waving at one of the bots that we had. And some of the cool, you probably can't see the bottom of the screen in the back, but there's the actual one of the hydrothermal vents, the volcanoes um, at the bottom, a black smoker they call them, um, as well as some of these uh, LED light up see-through creatures. I, that's the tech. What is it? Okay, it's yeah, you're right. It is a comb jelly. I should have. I actually knew that. I thought I had a cooler name, but anyway, this comb jelly, um, which in my perception was like had like LED blinking multicolored lights on it. And I was like, whoa, that's trippy. Um, and I thought I was crazy and I didn't tell anyone I'd seen them. Uh, and then I saw some of them in a scientific magazine and I was like, yeah, those are cool. I've, yeah, I've seen those. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of really amazing stuff uh, to see. It's kind of like a look, watching shooting stars if you, around the portal, you sort of, it's, you turn the lights off on descent and uh, you let your eyes adjust to the darkness as you're going down and you can see the sort of bioluminescent creatures streaming past the, past the window as you go down. Um, and instead of just shooting stars, it's like multicolored shooting stars. You see the blue and red and green and it's just an amazing, magical place. So hope you guys all just follow along and support everyone as we do our deep ocean explorations.